15 ingredients of a man with white knuckles. This is just a summary. A man that actually cares, a man who seeks the welfare of God's people, a man trained to lead, a man of faith, a man undaunted, unshaken, a man watchful and vigilant, a man with sword drawn, a man loyal to the spirit, not a debtor to the flesh, a man after his king's glory, a man determined, a man who knows his position, a man who wins his battles, a man sealed in covenant, a man zealous for the house of God. Okay, I don't know if you've ever heard this lie. You start moving towards Jesus Christ, you know, ripples, there's a rippling effect that takes place when you get serious about Jesus Christ. It affects your family, it affects your close friendships. Your body is under the dominion of an old covenant, of an old ruler. It's called the law of sin and death. You must be sealed unto a new covenant. It's only the blood of Jesus Christ that sets you free to even be able to be sealed under a new covenant. And when you are, you enter in to Jesus Christ, and you are sealed in him. In him! You are sealed in a new covenant. You must be such a man or such a woman because that is the secret to living. The principle of sin in the flesh has dominion over our body, legally, which is why in Romans 7 it says that Jesus' death canceled and annulled that because there must be death to free us from that covenant so that we could separate ourselves from the covenant of death unto a covenant of life and now be ruled by a new man, Jesus Christ. You're a wall builder that's also a warrior. You need to realize that you need a trowel and to be constantly pressing forward in your spiritual growth. And yet you're always on guard, watchful and vigilant, that you have an enemy who is seeking whom he may devour. Why is the house of God forsaken? Why have we forsaken this? Most of us know the truth in here. And yet, we allow a blur to remain in our spiritual life. We allow a, a fog bank to settle in our spiritual senses. We can be sharp one day and dull the next. We must remain sharp. And if you sense your sword getting heavy in your hand, you grip your sword harder. And you refuse to relent until it leaves. You cannot accept diminishment of your spiritual life. The term we use at Ellerslie is no akakio. There is no space for tiredness, for cloudiness, for weakness. You must be strong. The enemy is monitoring your soul. If he sees a breach in the wall, he will take full advantage of it. There's a problem with us. Our walls are broken down. We do not have the heart of God. We have the heart of a normal, everyday human. We care at a certain level, but it doesn't affect us in our own living room. And if it's not affecting us in our own living room, then you know what? Hopefully God blesses them and takes care of them out there. We don't care. And as a result, you don't see us uh, putting on our boots and strapping them tight, putting on our belt, strapping it tight and saying, where do I go, God? Show me where to go. That's what we're cultivating. We're not limited to our own strength. And so when God exercises us, he is exercising and building and expressing a strength of heaven in and through us. See, this is what God wants to build in us. And this is what I would call the manly expression of the soul, an exertion, a man of white knuckles. This isn't anything. This is one of the most number one things that the enemy starts with in Ellerslie students. They have a very genuine encounter with God. And they begin to build. And this is exciting. What does the enemy come in and do? He says, this is nothing. Anytime I want, I can come in and knock it down. Anytime. This is nothing. What you have is false. It isn't real. It's nothing. Don't buy it. He's, he works with smoke and mirrors, and he makes himself look bigger than he is. That's how the enemy works. He's very good at it, mind you. But if we believe his bluff, he has power. That's the only thing. If, if you believe the bluff of the enemy, then you kowtow to it, and you allow that to be reality. He makes himself look big, and you say, he's big. Well, guess what? He's big then. He's big because you believe he's big. And as a result, you will not progress. The enemy has no access to your life if you, are, if you are in Jesus Christ. If you walk in obedience when God convicts and you respond, the enemy has no grounds, none. You walk 
in the impermeable barrier of the blood of Jesus and you are not the enemy's plaything. When the enemy starts laughing you to scorn, wait a minute, you're on an errand for the Almighty. You are being called to rebuild the walls in Jerusalem, to bring glory and fame and renown to the Most High God. Sure, the enemy's gonna laugh you to scorn. Sure, he will despise you. This is just how it works. You see, when you understand what the enemy is up to, what do you do? You set a watch in your soul. You know what it means to take every thought captive to the will of Christ Jesus? That's, that's watchman terminology. Hey, who are you? What are you doing here? Hark, I see an enemy approaching. Who is that? Shine the light in their face. Who are you? State your business. The enemy is out to destroy you, so what do you do? You're watchful. You're watchful of your soul. The moment the enemy tries to dupe you into saying, just take the night off. Okay, you've been serious about this Christianity thing for, you know, a good stretch of time now. Just one night. What's he doing? Remove the watchman from the wall for tonight. Just for tonight. I think it'll be okay. Don't take your counsel from him. He's waiting for the watchman to be removed from the tower. What's the first thing he's going to do? He's going to march on your structure. He's going to march on your city. He is not an idiot. He wants you dead. He will plot and he will plot and he will plot to your destruction because you are the greatest nemesis. You are one that is obedient to the call and there is nothing that he fears more. Be not afraid of them. Remember the Lord which is great and terrible. and Fight. Fight. Do not take their blows. You hit them. The enemy is your enemy. He is out to destroy you. You have the authority with the blood of Jesus to hit him. The mind of Christ is so far beyond and above the mind of the enemy. And that's what you have. The mind of Christ. Because you've submitted your body and you've turned over all your resources unto your God and you have gained all his resources. You have the word of God, the very mind of Christ in all matters, and it will explode every error of the enemy. Do you not know that the weapons of your warfare are mighty to the pulling down of strongholds? Do you not know that you wield the greatest power in the universe, the word of God? You stay inside the walls of Jerusalem and prove yourself a Christian. We do not turn outward to listen to the voices of this culture, to the philosophies of this age. We stay loyal unto the word of God. Be strong and of good courage. Why? Because you are doing the errands of the Almighty. Who wouldn't be strong and courageous? What's wrong with us as a church? We serve the Most High God and we're limp-wristed. We have no confidence, no courage, no backbone. Rock a sock, people of God.